So take it away, Cecilia. Thank you. Well, yes. Uh, I'm going to talk about password managers and or most of the time. Uh, this is a review of pass password managers, sorry. Or as most of you ask me, what is the best password manager? Uh, it's, it should be difficult to answer. Explain. So first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about me. And then I'm going to explain a little bit of what is user-friendly, because you're a very different crowd from my usual one. Um, and I have to talk a little bit of what do enterprises need, because enterprise needs are not the same as private user needs, or even small and medium business needs. You have the criteria, and so on. You get the point. First of all, I like users. Some of you yesterday, over beer, did the thing, the ritual, the oh, user ritual, but I actually like users. I also love tech, so I'm in a squeeze. I have a background in psychology, um, more specific educational psychology or pedagogics. And then I learned about techno actually I learned about technology way before I did that. But okay, I work as no a consultant. As, uh, sorry, this is early. <laughs> I work as a consultant with know it. It's an enterprise. It's an enterprise in both in all of Scandinavia, both in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and so on, and Finland. Sorry, I will not forget about Finland. And I mostly work with testing, or test management, or whatever testing. So, user-friendly. What is user-friendly? How do you measure something user-friendly? Or how do I measure something user-friendly? Well, first of all, uh, I could have considered uh, the password managers up against VECAG to uh, oh, the, the framework for HTML, or I could have uh, looked at regulations, or. Uh, looked at accessibility, and I did a little bit of that. But most of all, I looked about what is going on and what do the users need. And sometimes it's very obvious what the users need, and sometimes not so. So, it was pretty straightforward. I looked, well, I asked friends and colleagues and other people, what kind of password managers do you use? What kind of password managers do you know of? And then I looked them up. Do they have a business or enterprise solution? A few of them did. Some did not. Uh, some say they did, but do not. Really don't. <laughs> um, yeah, and I started doing this last year because I attended this conference last year and I had all these awesome talks. And somebody said, you know, I really wish I knew what kind of password managers that were user-friendly. And I figured, you know, that's my cue. I can do that. So I started looking into things last year, like a year from now, uh, a year ago. And the password managers, I've had to redo my work a lot of times this year because this is a really volatile time for password managers. It's not set. It's browser wars all over again. Uh, things are not defined yet. There are online password managers, there are offline password managers, there are password man managers that obviously is meant for private individual, there are password managers meant for business only. But really, the password managers that do take both the private user and the business into account is the one that I find most interesting. Yes. Uh, this is a picture from a Norwegian newspaper article. Um, they did a, uh, an in investigation into a leaked database to try to figure out what's in there. Is there anything interesting or relevant at all to Norway? And they did find something interesting and relevant to Norway. For you who are not Norwegian or Swedish, politie.no uh, is the police in Norway. And mil.no is military email addresses. And what's over here, it may not be very, very clear, but these are the passwords that they have. 
Let's see, there was one that was really fun. Yeah, okay, doesn't matter. So, private users use their business email accounts and quite possibly also business email, no, business passwords. Now, most users I talk to, they swear they have a system. All of them swear they have a system, or they have a system where they only reuse like weak password and weak <coughs> services and strong... No, they don't. Because at some point, they forget themselves, or something happened, and so on. And a lot of businesses, they only care about the, the, the situation that is going on the workplace. And they say, you know what, we can't interfere or care about what people do in their private life. It's private. And I appreciate that they're trying to respect the privacy of their workers. But really, it is a business problem that your users don't know better or don't have the tools to support a better password practice. I'm pretty sure the police and the military is looking into password managers now. So, enterprise, what do they need? Because a lot of the password managers that I looked at, they definitely want a piece of the enterprise business. It's easy billing, and it's more money, and it's less customer service than with individual users. So I get that. But a pa they, uh, an enterprise for provisioning, not just collective billing, they also need proper provisioning managing the users, getting them in there. So you can't just say that, okay, you can buy one big license for your company, that you have to give them something else as well. So that's on the criteria for how to pick a password manager. Safe sharing in teams. We are still in the situation where collective passwords are in use. There are routers and servers and so on that do not have uh, the possibility to have individual password management, no, sorry, user management, so you end up in a collective license. And then there's bad habits and so on, but it doesn't matter. Teams share passwords. We have to respect that. What they do and what they should do, different thing. And you want to, you really want to, make sure that you have work, passwords separate from private accounts because you don't want to mix them. <clears throat> and you definitely want to monitor the quality. You want to know if this investment was worth your money. Is it improving? Is the quality or, and the security of your users improving? Documentation and self-help material. Not all password managers may need this, but if you're looking at yourself as a, like an uh, off-the-shelf product, you may want to make sure that this is good. And if you're looking into buying a password manager, consider this as a, if it's not good documentation and self-help material, you need to consider the cost of development, developing it yourself. So if you go for, like instance, uh, an open source solution, like KeePass, there are some, but it's not a off-the-shelf product. So even though you uh, save a lot of money on licenses, you may have to spend money on uh, putting on the... Um, uh, making the uh, documentation and also putting on a better front-end for your user and so on. Local language matters. Not everybody is very good at speaking English. Uh, today, not even I'm a, I am good at speaking English, so... You know, we all may have a bad day. And especially if your users are not using English as their working language, local languages matters. And machine translated... Oh. <clears throat> security. Now, this is the point where you sort of end up with a trade-off between security and usability. Because if you're going to have proper paranoid security, your usability goes down, because it means that you end up with a solution that is an offline password manager. Simple as that. For a lot of companies, having online 
password management could be a very good trade-off. Laws and regulations. GDPR is, applies to the European Union and a lot of the other countries connected to the European Union. There may be other local laws and regulations that affect you. Make sure that you are compliant. So this is, I, because all the products that I looked at, they were very different uh, in so many ways. I try making sense of them. So this is how I try making sense of them. I put them up and, okay, is there, are they reasonably enterprise-like? Uh, yes and no. Uh, a lot of them says no because they're offline products, and some are just no. No, it doesn't matter. I'll, get, I'll, I'll show you why. <laughs> uh, price matters. When you're buying a license for, let's say, 30 people, price don't matter that much. But when you're buying license for thousands, even uh, a few cents may matter. Luckily, for a lot of the um, big ones, price is a point of negotiation. If you have a lot of users, your cost will change. So just, just talk to them. I know a lot of people hate it when the price is not set in the beginning, but try talking to the company if you're a big one. If not, you can assume that the next level of pricing, which is for businesses, is close to where you're at. Uh, platforms matter. And now we're getting into the usability. Because if I'm, as a user, is going to invest my time and patience into this software that my job told me to do and use, I want to make sure that it's worth my time. And if it's only on my work machine, I'd rather have a system. I hate when people have systems, but I get why they choose not to. So pay attention to the quality of your passwords that you have in your business before you get a password manager. Pay also attention to onboarding, how many people are on board compared to what you expect. Because if not a lot of people get on board with your program, you may be doing something wrong. Yes. I also had, a, that's like the short version of the UX. I'm going to talk more about Navigate. You individual points of it. Um, some UX is easy to navigate. You, you, you understand very clearly what you're doing, what is going on. Uh, some solutions like KeePass is definitely more demanding. You, uh, the audience for this is technical people. <laughs> and then uh, I tried figuring out Password Manager Pro, but it was actually so difficult to install and get a trial running that I gave up. Um, <clears throat> most means more than Mac, Vin, iOS, and Android. Uh, and then there's Bitwarden. I like Bitwarden. It has all the platforms, even platforms I haven't heard of. And that's rare. So, onboarding. This is the first meeting your users will have with the password manager. So onboarding is super important. The tone of voice that, the, um, uh, that they're meeting matters a lot. And then there's offboarding. And offboarding matters a bit to the users because they want to know that their time and effort is well invested. I will accept that sometimes the users don't really care because when they leave, they're not going to touch a computer again. Uh, but most of the times, if they put all their passwords into this basket that you gave them, they want to make sure that they can take their private stuff and go. Offboarding is also super important for businesses in the cases that we don't want to talk about, the cases of the unfaithful servants. And that is also a good, good reason to make sure that you can move them out of your system, let them take their password with them. You don't know if they put their business password in their private account. That's just a thing. And then discreetly update the passwords that that person used to have access to. And that is super important because 
the case may not be closed, and you definitely want to, don't want to tell everybody at the company that you know we the person who just left may have been a uh, unfaithful servant. You want to keep that under lid until things are uh, done. So just you know, let them go properly with their passwords and update what you got left. Recovery. How many recoveries are there first day after summer vacation? A lot. Why? Because people do forget their password. Recovery matters. Unfortunately, a lot of the solutions that are offline don't really have a recovery process. They say, you know, I'm sorry, but we're very, very secure, so there is no way you can recover your password if you forgot it. And I understand from a security point of view, if you need that paranoid level of security, uh, fine. But if you don't, please look at the recovery solution. Because your normal, everyday user is going to need it. And if you tell them, I'm sorry, we don't have a recovery solution, you will have to start all over collecting your password and putting it into this software. Do you think they will? I don't think. Anyone will. I wouldn't. It has to be easy to add the password in the right place. And that's, that's just pure hygiene. Search has to be uh, implemented and possible to do. Uh, I didn't have problem with any of the password managers search, which is good. But whenever you're reviewing a password manager for your company with your specific needs, have a look at the search. Platforms, I already mentioned, matters. And it's also good if the software is helpful in the right way. I love that the soft, my password manager checks for uh, leaks from the Have I Been Pawned database and so on. I love that it tells me, you know what? Did you know that you've reused your password on these two places? It's wonderful. It makes me a better human very discreetly and helpful. It's not so nice when it's helpful the wrong way, like autofilling. The passwords that are being generated has to be manageable, because while most of the time you're just going to copy it from the password manager, or it's even been like click and then fill out, you will end up in situations where you need to type it manually, for instance, on your TV, or because at this moment, it's not just not possible to copy directly. So it has to be easy to see the password and type it. So I removed some of the uh, options that are not options. Um, and I had to like, try to set it up like onboarding, offboarding, recovery, and so on. Um, and most are OK, but not all of them. And now, <clears throat> I wish I could film you now, because now I'm going to show you a quote. This is the quote. Can you read it? OK. This is about the recovery process of a password manager. And because, by the way, nobody's paying me for this. <laughs> I'm not affiliated with any of the password managers. So I don't have a problem with naming and shaming XScript for saying this about password recovery. They are saying. All that being said, covering your password. A case where we could possibly help you, because essentially they say we can't help you with recovering your password. If you think your password, no, you think you know your password, but not quite, or if it's less than five characters long, <laughs> then we can write and adapt a special program that will try many combinations automatically. This is called a brute force attack. I don't ever want to know I have a suggestion like this. There, there's so many right things wrong with this. And, and in essence, I don't trust this provider at all. Things like less than five characters long and our recovery solution is brute force attack. No. <laughs> so they say they have enterprise solution, but they don't. And this keeps happening. I, when I was looking into things, they don't really have an enterprise solution. They have an enterprise billing solution. Yes. So, now to the interesting part. 
the best, but I will also do some honorable mentions, and I will start with them because we're going to end up having questions after, I'm pretty sure. First of all, KeePass. KeePass is an offline solution. It's an open source solution. It's not super user friendly at this point, but that's also the point. You have no license cost with KeePass, and it's a wonderful thing to do um, comparison against. When you're looking at other solutions, look at KeePass to measure what do I get for my money? Because it is also, because it's open source, possible to say that, you know what, we're just going to use KeePass as a core and develop our own glazing on top. KeePass was added to the EU bug bounty program last year, so the security of KeePass, in addition to being an offline password manager, is being hardened as we speak. I'm very interested to see what kind of solution that would come out of this. I've seen some are built on KeePass and then they made it prettier and so on. But I think 2020 will be a very interesting year in many ways. Disadvantages, demanding UX, significant self-effort to make it uh, suitable for your uh, business, and there's no audit. And that goes for all the offline password managers. You don't really have an audit, which is why it's problematic for a lot of companies. F-Secure Key is a bundled product, so I didn't really want to uh, review it at all because you have to buy and then with something else and it was difficult to review because then I had to, inst you know. However, I did tell people that I was doing this review and the users that, uh, there came some user over to me and they're like, oh, I bet you're not doing F-Secure password manager and I said, well, I don't know yet. I like this and this thing, but so much. And usually when, I, when people tell me about their password manager, they say, oh, I like this and these things, but I hate these and these things. And by the way, this is annoying me. But the five F-Secure users that came over and talked to me during this year all love it so much. They didn't even care that it didn't support all their platforms and didn't have a private uh, vault, which is rare. So I haven't reviewed it, but I think I should mention it just because of that. Then there's Dashlane. Dashlane, I started looking at Dashlane last year. It was a bundled product at the time with a VPN solution. It was super expensive, difficult to understand what, what they were doing, so I decided not to. But they have changed their pricing model the last year to something that makes sense <coughs> <laughs> and is way cheaper. And their onboarding process is really nice. Like, the next one I'm going to mention, 1Password, their onboarding is also nice, but this one was even better. And I didn't think that would happen. Uh, they still have a little bit confusing price mode, and I think they're going to change it again. I don't know. And their free model, which is part of the offboarding part, is extremely limited. That's annoying. Um, yeah. Very important, you can navigate Dashlane by only using keyboard. And that's part of accessibility. Um, the next one, one password. You cannot navigate it by only using keyboard. Well, you can, but it's sort of like a lottery, so it's not good for that. <laughs> Are you making notes? Good. Also, they have a big fan base, uh, especially because they had an offline solution, but I think it's being discontinued. I don't know, um, but people are annoyed because of it. Uh, already existing users are annoyed. For me as a new user, I wouldn't know about this, so I'm not sure if I care. Uh, sorry, existing users. <laughs> it's well known. Uh, it's especially well-known among Mac people because, as with Dashlane, it comes from an iOS world, which means that the interface is beautiful. <laughs> uh, it has a very lot of interesting and relevant features, and I like that they are very, among other things, in touch with community and shows up on events like this and has been adapting new good ideas fast, like the... Uh, integration with uh, a well-known URL. 
So now it's last pass. I just stopped adding things at some point. I'm sorry. LastPass is for users what kind of... Unfortunately, I know of companies who said, OK, we're going to ask our users what kind of password manager do they use privately and just pick the one that most people have. Most people have LastPass because they have a very good free solution or good enough free solution for private users. It doesn't make them the best password managers for business. But I'll, I'll, I'll talk, take the good first. They do support a lot of platforms, really. They have a lot of features, uh, and they have very good uh, go uh, documentation and uh, self-help material. They do. Their tone of voice when you're being onboarded is a bit technical. It may not be offensive, but it's definitely not welcoming if you're not a technical user. It's a bit like when, when I got the email, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to do the IT people a favor now by doing this thing. And, you know. Recovery with LastPass has significant flaws, and I'll talk more about it in a minute. But this is why I'm so disappointed with LastPass, because I really wanted them to be good, because I wanted to have two, three good options to give you when you ask what is the best password manager. But recovery is so important, so no. Because of their errors with the uh, recovery solution, it is now incompatible with what's called a zero trust architecture. I am assuming you are familiar with the concept. Please nod if you are familiar. OK. I'll get back to that then. I tried telling them about the flaws in their recovery solution. It was not welcome. I tried a lot. They were still not taking feedback. And then I talked to other people saying that, you know what, LastPass, oh, they never take feedback from the community. And that is a bad thing. Because even though you have a closed bug bounty program, other people are going to see your product with their eyes and discover things. And you definitely want that kind of feedback. It's going to cost you in uh, managing um, feedbacks, but it's worth it. And also, I was annoyed when I asked them about a .well-known URL. Uh, and they answered, you know, we'll see if it becomes the standard. I don't want to have that laid back, like wait and see attitude when it comes to my password manager. I really wanted them to be in the front, and defining password managers. And at the moment, they're not. And again, 2020 is going to be interesting because both Dashlane and OnePassword just acquired a bunch of money, so they're stepping it up. This is an example. Uh, I don't think you can read it, uh, but this is an example of uh, Dashlane's onboarding that says, uh, you've been invited to join a company name at the time uh, I, that I gave is Vian, I know it's my last name, on Dashlane. Like, come and join us. And the other was on, your company has partnered with LastPass. I don't care who my company partners with. And the email is super long, and it's invited, and it's technical, and so on. So, you know, it's not a disaster. It's just not as good as the other two. Are you ready? <laughs> OK, so recovery at, with LastPass business solution or enterprise solution is that uh, your company takes over the recovery responsibility. LastPass doesn't uh, because they have a, a policy of not knowing your password. Great. Um, this is me, and I lost my password. So I'm calling customer service. We don't see each other. That's the line. I'm calling on the phone to customer service, and I say, hi, this is Cecilia. Uh, I've lost my password, can you please recover it? And of course, customer service says, sure, push the button. There's an email or SMS or whatever that you set up, goes out, and I get um, a new password or password link. That's OK. I, I would be happy with this solution. But that's not what's going on. What's going on is, hi, I know my password, the password that I want. And then I'm calling customer service, and I tell them, could you recover my account? And the customer service says, sure. And I says, you know what? I have an idea for what kind of password I want. Could you just set Internet Dagana, Hugh and Itten? 
And the customer service person says, sure, types in my new password that I just told them, sends out an email, I'm not fine with that. I don't want them to know. And this is the problem with the zero trust model. They're not supposed to know my password. And of course, I talked to a LastPass and they said, you can turn off this feature, but a business feature without a recovery solution is not sufficient. So, very shortly, what questions do you have? And I'll take comments after. <laughs>